It is so good to see all of you here. Um, thank you so much for using your, your power and your voices to demand our right to a livable future. We are trade unionists, we're environmentalists, we're peace activists, we're campaigners for social justice, for equality and human rights. We're students, we're families, we're children, and we're grandparents. And all of us, all of us, are united to survive. All of us shining a light on what happens here on Tufton Street. Groups like the Global Warming Policy Foundation are nothing more than fronts for climate-wrecking fossil fuel companies. Their fingerprints are all over government policy. And we know that by masquerading as charities, they get away with using public money to fund their blatant denial of the overwhelming global scientific evidence that we are in a climate emergency. So that's why we're here today, to say loudly and clearly, it has got to stop. Yeah. I'm one of a, a cross-party group of parliamentarians taking legal action against the sinister activities on Tufton Street. But we need the government to take action too. So we have three big asks for them today, but actually they're quite simple. The first one would be, tell the truth. Tell the truth about the climate emergency. Tell the truth about real solutions, not false solutions. And tell the truth about climate justice. And second, stop aiding and abetting the climate criminals. Those fossil fuel companies who are in receipt of obscene subsidies at the very same time that so many of our friends and families can't actually afford to put food on the table. And third, simple, keep fossil fuels in the ground. Yeah. You know, last year, the UK had its first ever red warning for heat. BP's annual profits doubled to 23 billion pounds. And yet at the same time, nine million people spent Christmas in the cold and the damp because they were unable to heat their homes. That is the truth that the government needs to tell. That is the truth that it should be acting on. Yet it talks about net zero by 2050, but not only does it have no plans to actually get there, but as we know, net zero by 2050 for a developed country like the UK, one that is overwhelmingly responsible for the emissions in the atmosphere, that is nowhere near enough. The science demands us to go faster the science demands us to go much, much further. Because net zero by 2050 relies on not counting imported emissions. It relies on technology that isn't even invented yet. It ignores our historic emissions. It ignores the racial legacies of colonialism and racism. Friends, the global climate crisis is a racial justice crisis. And that's why that's why climate justice must be front and center of all climate action. And the UK must pay climate reparations. In a country like the UK, the fifth richest country in the world, net zero by 2050 isn't climate action. Net zero by 2050 is a crime against humanity. We know that real climate action is real zero by 2030. Real climate action is the UK doing its fair share towards reducing our climate emissions in line with 1.5 degrees as a limit, not a target. It's a livable future of clean, green, affordable renewables, of warm and comfortable homes, of clean air and clean water, skilled and stable jobs. Yet none of that is possible whilst the climate criminals are allowed to operate with impunity, while the fossil fuel giants keep on polluting, and while those inside 55 to 57 Tufton Street do their political dirty work for them. The misinformation and disinformation, the denial and the delaying, Tufton Street is doing it all. They are working hand in hand with government ministers to aid and abet criminal crimes, it's wrong, it is criminal, and we're here to say enough is enough. And we're here to say 
We demand that fossil fuels are kicked out of politics, that they're kicked out of our economy, that they're kicked out of our energy system for good. We want a future where fossil fuels stay where they belong, firmly and permanently in the ground. But right now, we know ministers are deciding whether or not to give the green light to the biggest undeveloped oil and gas field in the North Sea, in Rosebank. Rosebank would produce more emissions than the 28 low-income countries combined. It would devour billions in subsidies. And don't let them try and pretend this is about energy security, because we know that the vast majority of that oil would simply be exported. So friends, we chose a different future when we stopped plans to drill at Cambo, and we can do the same again. So together, let's commit again here and now that we will stop the North Sea from becoming home to yet another climate crime scene, that we will stop the Tufton Street criminals. Let's keep fossil fuels in the ground and let's stop Rosebank. Thank you.